In my last video I started building a new disk sender and so far it works pretty well. But I still want to change several things and I also need to build an enclosure for it. Right now the disk spins at about 1400 RPM. But I want it a little bit higher, about 1700. So in order to do that I need to change the pulley ratio. The pulley attached to the disk needs to get smaller. So I put it back on the lathe and turn it to the required diameter. I used a roughing gouge to remove the majority of the material and then I used a parting tool and a little detail tool to get the right pulley shape for the V-belt. As you can see making a pulley out of wood is really not difficult and saves you a lot of money. I could have just made the disc pulley smaller to get the right RPM but then I would have to mount the motor a lot higher than before. So I worked out a pulley ratio that makes the right RPM and doesn't change the position of the motor that much. But that also meant that I had to make a bigger motor pulley. So now with higher RPM. That second noise you can hear is the rollerblade wheel coming up to speed. Then I focused on making an enclosure. The back is just screwed on, nothing fancy here. There is also a little cover in the front under the table that should improve dust collection and protect the disc from below. The next thing this sander needs is a cover that covers up the disc around here and the belt. So I drew up the arc for the disc on a piece of plywood and next I'm gonna cut this out on a bandsaw. I could have just cut it out freehand but I decided to try my circle jig. So I put in the right insert then adjusted it to the right radius and locked it in place. Cutting the arc is now really simple. I just have to slide the piece into the blade and then turn it. Next I'm gonna cut off the corners. and sand them to the line. But somehow this didn't really work. I recognized that the pulley came loose so I had to fix that problem before I could go on. So far there were two set screws through the pulley which pressed onto the shaft. But obviously that friction was not enough so I drilled a hole into the shaft with the pulley in place. I had to remove the cuttings with a magnet very often. This flange is made from some very tough steel and fortunately I have a drill bit that cuts through that stuff. Next I took one of the set screws and grinded the end a little bit so it would fit inside the hole on the shaft. Then I screwed it back in position and it fit the hole. The set screw itself is mounted in a slightly undersized hole through the pulley and it cuts its own threads in the wood. And I also put another screw next to the set screw and its head prevents it from coming loose again. Once that was done I could continue on making the cover. I transferred the corners onto the back piece, cut it out and made sure that it fits around the belt and the rollerblade wheel. The front and back are connected with some small pieces and you can see the shape to which I need to cut them to. That's all done on the bandsaw. I used my bandsaw fence to help me guide the pieces through the blade. And now you can see how it comes together. Then it was just a matter of adding glue and clamps. Unfortunately the glue up wasn't entirely flat so I had to flatten it out on my drum sander. And then I glued on the back piece. To 
mount this cover, I want to use a similar method that is used on this bandsaw here. So the bandsaw cover has these little pins that stick out the back and one here and they fit in some holes in the frame. So I basically want to do the same. Here I got some holes, here two because I screwed up. And now I'm gonna put this on and I can find the right hole positions with these dowel center finders. I shape the dowels conical on one end, that makes it easier to put the cover on. With the cover mounted, the machine is pretty much fully enclosed. So yeah, this cover came out quite nice and it really looks interesting now. Some of the gaps that were left from the glue up I filled with sawdust and glue. And now I can sand over all those corners and the best tool to do this, well, is a disc sander. Because everything on the sander came out much better than I expected, I decided to really finish it. So I sanded everything to 80, 120 and finally to 180 grit. And then I painted and varnished everything in the same green-black color scheme that all of my homemade machines follow. I put on two coats of paint and one coat of varnish to give it some gloss. And I also sealed the edge of the disc and the table with varnish. The painting came out pretty nice, I think. Then it was time for it to get to its new location in the shop. So the last thing the sander needs is the connection to the dust collection system. I have this 90 degree elbow here and this fits my hose. And the other end fits into the hole and I made a little clamp at the side and this holds it in place. And here I have a outlet from my pipe system and I can finally put on another one of my homemade blast gates. And now I just need to cut the hose to the right length and connect the two pieces. And now it really is ready to use. So being said that the sander just started as an experiment, it turned out way better than I expected. And I really like how the cover came out. Of course it is inspired by the Bansaw cover, but I think it looks really nice and interesting. And this sander will see a lot of use and you will see it in a lot of my future videos, but believe it or not, this one is just temporary. I already started to draw plans for a combination disc and belt sander, but I don't know how soon I will get to this, maybe two or three months from now, maybe longer, I don't know, but I will get to it. And there will be another video series about building it. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.